Hey fam, Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and friends, our E-Family, and everyone who is connected in any way to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Good Tuesday evening to you. This is called a Tuesday Touch, and I'm delighted to share that touch with you. And I'm grateful that all those who are expecting this moment in time, this experience, are sharing with us and then sharing with others exactly what's happening at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. It's time for Tuesday Touch. Uh, I don't see anybody on there yet, right? Tuesday Touch from the Avenue. Tuesday Touch. It's a joy to be a part of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church family, even in times of crisis and challenge. I'm delighted that we have the opportunity to share with one another. Hey, this is Karen Tillman. Uh, it's good to see you all the way from Iowa. God bless you, Brother Kate. We praise God for you. And all the, hey, this is Patricia. God bless you. Welcome. Glad you're sharing with us in our experience today. This is Carla. Welcome, welcome, welcome. They're all my friends showing up. It's good to see you all hanging out with us for Tuesday Touch, uh, this second Tuesday Touch for uh, during this season. And it's a unique season to be sure. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Once more of our friends join with us. Good to see Raina Cooper, one of our trustees sharing with us. Good evening, Trustee Cooper. Praise God for you. LaMonica, good to see you. Glad to have you uh, with us today. Praise God for you. But Vinnie Wilson, long time music man of our church, singer, and uh, commit, committed brother to our men's choir. God bless you. Uh, that's Benny Wilson. Uh, that's not uh, the Benny I was thinking about. Hey, says Benny, God bless you. Praise God for you and all those who are sharing with us today. To God be the glory for uh, this privilege uh, to gather together uh, on a Tuesday evening for Tuesday Touch, Tuesday Touch. And as we share together, uh, I am grateful that God has blessed our church to stay connected. That's really what we're emphasizing over these days, these weeks, that we stay connected. So you got a hashtag that I hope that you will use as you share uh, in the many ways that we're sharing together. Hashtag stay connected, W-A-B-C. Hashtag stay connected, W-A-B-C. Hey, everybody, it's good to have you sharing with us. God bless you all the way from L.A., God bless you, Darnell. Praise God for you. I see you, Deacon White. God bless you. I can't even keep up with the names now. Praise God for all of you who are sharing with us uh, this evening. Uh, we are grateful for Tuesday Touch. Deacon Isidore, God bless you, sir. As a matter of fact, we may as well give credit to Deacon Isidore for this entitled last week. He called it a touch on Tuesday or Tuesday Touch, and we just took it and ran with it. God bless you, Deacon Isidore. James, uh, praise God for you. Uh, those of you who have been keeping up, up with us, you know we are doing our best uh, to give daily touches, daily touches. We call it a Tuesday touch, but every day we're trying to do something that will keep us connected uh, as a congregation, keep us connected as a family, wherever you are, uh, whomever you are, whether you're a member proper of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church or whether you're part of our E family. And we do thank God for all those around the world uh, who are sharing what the Bible says. Malik, yes, sir. God bless you. Uh, praise God for you. I believe in what the Bible says. So we'll talk about a little bit more of that um, as, as this night goes forward. Uh, we praise God for the opportunity to share with one another. There are several things that I need to mention to us as we spend these few moments together, and I want you to make sure that you stay connected. Yesterday, uh, we began, well, let's go back to Sunday. Sunday, we had a time of worship, and we're grateful for all of those of you who shared with us in worship on Sunday. However long you stayed with us, either uh, at the top of the day or the middle of the day or the end of the day, whatever the case may be, we're grateful that you shared with us as we had worship on this past Sunday. Please know that our worship uh, times are going to shift. We're going to shift our worship times coming up on Sunday. Hey, Richard Boone, fourth, God bless you, preacher. Uh, we're going to shift those worship times, and we're going to begin at 7 a.m., as is our custom, and then we'll go until right around noon, right around noon, central time, 
For those who are on different time zones, we'll start at 7 a.m. Central and we'll go into right around noon. And uh, that will be our the entirety of our worship day. Uh, this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. So don't take for granted the fact that we're in a special season, a unique season. And we want you to be a part of this season as we share together, even distance and from a distance, even uh, virtually. I want you to remember how significant this season is and please share with us as we continue uh, to celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for each and every one of us. I want you to be a part of uh, our experiences of worship every single Sunday, beginning now from 7 a.m. to 12 noon. And then on Monday evenings, we'll have New Music Monday, and that's a wonderful time where we just celebrate the music that was written by the musicians of our church. Uh, our God has blessed us with some wonderful, creative brothers and sisters uh, who use their gifts so magnificently here on our church campus each and every week, uh, causing us to have a phenomenal music ministry. And we praise God for the opportunity to have uh, the experience of phenomenal music every time we gather. So New Music Monday, last night, we just shared one song, one song uh, from those uh, who shared with us uh, their musical genius and created our welcome song. And many of you know it well. As a matter of fact, many of you requested it. We welcome you to Wheeler Avenue, and we're so grateful that we're able to share together uh, with brothers and sisters on New Music Monday. Tuesday Touch is this exact, this 7 o'clock hour, 7 o'clock Central Time. We gather together just to talk for a few minutes. I'll keep you for about, about half hour or so. I want to talk to you about a few things before we get uh, before we lose our time together. And then on Wednesdays, we have a word on Wednesday, word on Wednesday. We start early in the morning at 6 a.m. for prayer. 6 a.m. we start in prayer, and I hope that you will dial in to our prayer call number. If you don't have it, you can get it off our website, and it can certainly be a blessing to those of you who have not yet shared with us in prayer. Next week, we'll have a whole other listing of prayer times. I'll get to that shortly, but at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, we'll be in prayer. Then at 12 noon, we'll be in Bible study, and I hope that you will share with us in Bible study. And then at 7 p.m., we'll do the same thing again. We'll have a, a word from the Lord uh, as we are led in Bible study tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Now, on Thursdays, every Thursday, we do uh, some unique things. One of the things that we do is have our young people uh, have Bible study. They have their own Bible study either on Zoom or or in, I think it's all on Zoom, yeah, so it's all on Zoom. And so our young people, youth, and our college students and our young adults will all be in Bible study Thursday, and I hope that you will share uh, in Bible study all those who have the opportunity to do so on Thursday. What else happens on Thursday? Is that it? Oh, Throwback Thursday. That's phenomenal. Last Thursday, we had our first one, and uh, this coming Thursday, we'll have yet another one. Throwback Thursday, we just reach back into the archives of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, pull up some wonderful thing that blessed us, and we hope that it will bless you. And so on Throwback Thursday, we've already planned it out. You're going to be blessed. Trust me, don't miss Throwback Thursday this coming Thursday. Is that it at 7 or is that at noon? Noon, at 12 noon, uh, we will go uh, live with Throwback Thursday and then uh, we'll be able to repost it. You'll be able to re see it if you miss it, uh, see it again if you miss it, uh, or see it if you miss it uh, after the noon experience. And then Friday's is Fitness Friday. We're going to keep our bodies strong, keep our bodies healthy, and I hope that you will share with us. This is our first one, and we're excited about Fitness Friday, and I hope that you will uh, put your fitness clothes on, your, your sweat clothes, and let's, let's burn some calories. Let's, let's expend some energy. Uh, you're sitting up in the house sometimes and only eating can be deleterious to our progress. So I hope that you will join us for Fitness Friday uh, as we share together uh, this for the first time this coming Friday. Then Saturday, Sing Along Saturday. We're going to have our first Sing Along Saturday this coming Saturday, and our music ministry have already been in production, and they are raring to go as we bring to you the first of our Sing Along Saturdays, and I hope that you will share with us in that regard as well. Then we'll start all over Sunday, and we'll worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness on Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday. So friends, there's a lot going on at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in the virtual church. And I hope that you will make sure that you share with us. We still have a, a conference call for our seniors and we do that to make sure that all of our seniors stay connected and we're gonna be a blessing to them as we, and because they've been such a blessing to our church. And so all of our seniors can share with the Reverend Dr. Barbara Williams and with Pastor Jacques Diggins as they share with us their experiences and their reflections as we move through this season of quarantine 
during this season of isolation and separation uh, from the church campus. Uh, now listen, next week, next week is going to be very unique because next week is Holy Week. It's a very significant season in the life of our church, Holy Week, Passion Week, as some call it. And I uh, hope that you will share with us during the Holy Week experience next week every evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Monday through Thursday. We're going to have a very special experience. It's called the Road to Resurrection. It's a throwback. Yes, it is. But we're going to have Road to Resurrection, and I hope that you will share with us as we look through the scriptures and see what Jesus did each and every night of those last nights of his life. Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. is going to be the Road to Resurrection. And then on Friday, Pastor John, uh, Johnson, what do we do? What time is... Uh, and Good Friday, noon, noon, Good Friday is our regular time, noon, uh, uh, at 12 noon, we're going to share in a different way. Uh, this year, we usually have a regular Good Friday service. This time we're saying the seven last words from the cross, the seven last words of Jesus Christ from the cross, and all of our preachers are going to share together, and it's going to be a blessing. So at 12 noon, we're going to share together uh, the seven last words of the Lord Jesus. So noon, it's on Central Time, be with us, and let's uh, share together in that experience. Got a lot going on. We plan for you. Uh, your church con is concerned about you. Your church cares about you. And we want to stay connected to you. So we've got a lot of planning going on. And I hope that you will participate in the experiences that I laid out for us over these next several days. Now, friends, if you have been infected by the coronavirus, we want to hear from you. And we want to stay connected to you more, most especially. So if you've been uh, infected with the coronavirus during this time, please email Congregational care at wheelerbc.org. Congregational care at wheelerbc.org. The Reverend Janella Piles, our Minister of Congregational Care, is going to retrieve that email and we're going to make sure we stay doubly connected to you. We've heard of several members of our church, there's a few members of our church who have been infected with the virus, but we want to know if there's anyone else so we can stay connected to you and seek to be a blessing to you while you go through uh, that season of adjustment and a, and a season of restoration. We believe in healing. We believe in the total healing of the body. And so if you're a person who has been infected or you have loved ones who are who have been infected and so you've been affected, we want you to make sure you make connection with us so we can keep you in prayer uh, during this time. Our children's ministry, I see somebody asking about Awana. Thank you, Sister Brina Barnett. Our children's ministry has a whole lot going on planned for the children. Yes, Awana is meeting. Yes, the children have a whole lot planned. Uh, Ms. Kim Washington, our children's director, has planned out weekday e events. So almost every day of the week, she's got something for the children. And I want you to make sure that you check with her to make sure you have that schedule. I don't have it before me right now, but I want you to check with Ms. Ms. Kim Washington, uh, even Ms. Sabrina Barnett. She probably knows exactly how many things are happening for our children. But one of those things is a wanna. That's their weekly Bible study, and we don't want them to miss it. So please, brothers and sisters, if you have children, uh, know that our children likewise can Stay connected during this time, and I hope that you will share with them. Uh, if you have children, let your children be a part of the experience. As a matter of fact, by the time we get to Resurrection Sunday, we're going to sh showcase our children. We already planned for that, and so I hope that you will look forward to that and uh, be blessed by it. Listen, uh, one of the things that has happened over and over again uh, is many people around the around well across the country have talked about the census census 2020. Um, if you've not uh, filled out your census form, we need you to do that. Census form day is tomorrow. We want you to make sure that you know uh, that you have filled out your census form and submitted it. Uh, if you have not, if you don't have it, you can't find it. You can get one online, but we want to make sure that you. Uh, fill out that census form. It will do us well in the communities of our cities to make sure that we are well represented because we have filled out the census form uh, for the 2020 census. There's a lot going on. And since most of us are quarantined and in isolation at home, uh, we can take the time to get these things done, even in the midst of everything else we have going on. So please uh, do that. And we'll be glad that you did. Let me tell you one of the wonderful things that I've heard over and over again during uh, this time. I've heard this, this phrase repeated uh, by several brothers and sisters uh, who have sent me text messages or emails or some in some way have connected words, I miss my church. Yeah, I get it. I miss uh, having you in the sanctuary. I miss being with you for worship. I miss the experiences of connectivity uh, with brothers and sisters at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I miss my church. I've heard that quite frequently. And it's called separation anxiety. I get it. We can't get to uh, the campus and that heightens our anxiety. 
We talked a little bit about that last week and on Tuesday evening when we reminded ourselves that our brothers and sisters of the Jewish community were exiled from their homeland and they could not get back to it. But God said, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. That's the word from Isaiah. I thank that. Thank God for that peace that he gives, which passes all understanding. Separation anxiety is real. It is not to be discounted. It's not to be underplayed or undervalued. Separation anxiety is a very real thing. I want to talk about it tonight from the perspective of the Lord Jesus, who understood that even those who were his disciples were going to experience separation anxiety when he departed from them during the last nights, uh, last days of his life. The last night of his life with the disciples was that Thursday evening. Uh, we'll se celebrate it even more next week. It's called Monday Thursday. But on Thursday evening, when the Lord Jesus met with his disciples, John's gospel records that he had an extended time with them, extended time of teaching letting them know exactly how he wanted them to represent him while he was away from them. And he said, I'm going to leave you. I've got to go away from you for a season. I've got to check with check. I've got to do the work. I complete the work that I have come to, to the earth to do. And then I'm going to go back to my father. That, that, that was a anxious moment for them. It caused anxiety. Angst rose up in their spirits. And so to calm them down, to let them know that everything was going to be all right, Listen to how Jesus begins his lesson to them when they dealt with separation anxiety. John's gospel in chapter 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. He says, I want to give you some comfort for your misery. And I believe my brothers and sisters that despite the challenging times that we face right now, those of us who can't get to our sacred space, to our favorite seat in the sanctuary, or even in the worship center. Some folk wouldn't even mind being in the worship center right now. But for those of us who can't get there, the good news is that the entirety of John chapter 14, Jesus gives us comfort for our misery. That no matter how miserable our circumstance is, no matter how threatening this virus may be, no matter how menacing the times may be, and how, 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 frustrated we get by all that's going on right now. Jesus says, let me give you some comfort. I want you to know uh, that I'm going to take care of you in spite of it. He says, even if I leave you, I'm going to give to you the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be a comforter who abides with you forever. So whether you're one person in the house or you're one of many persons in the house, or one of two, whatever the case may be, the good news is in spite of your anxiety, the good news is that God gives us the Holy Spirit as our comforter. He is the one who calms us down, who gives us that peace that passes all understanding. And I invite you to draw on the Holy Ghost who's inside of you. I invite you to allow him to be that one who anchors you and sustains you in the midst of these trying times. And these are trying times. These are the times that try men and women's souls. These are some circumstances that none of us could have ever predicted that none of us has ever lived through. None of us has ever seen anything like this. But we're so grateful that our God was not surprised by it. And whatever misery we have to deal with, whatever anxiety we are faced with, we have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is important, church family, because we can't just talk about the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. And we can't just talk about the Holy Spirit when we have ecstatic moments in worship. We talk about the Holy Spirit who comforts us when we're alone in our houses, when we're alone or, or when we're facing circumstances that are beyond our control. And when we're dealing with situations that we didn't want to have to deal with, he is still our comforter. And I invite you to allow the Holy Spirit to be your comforter during this time, give you comfort for your misery, whatever that misery may be, however it may present itself. If it's because of a lack of a job, because you can't get to your job, because your job has laid you off, because you're not getting the remuneration that you need to get right now, you're not being paid like you want to be paid. The good news is the comforter who is the Holy Spirit knows how to handle our misery, whatever that is. When I mean, you read John chapter 14, Jesus says, don't get troubled. Don't get out of sorts. Don't get all wild or wild out. Don't do anything that is beyond who you are as my disciple. Calm down. I got you. And I got a promise for you. And the promise is I'll give to you the ever-present help of the Holy Spirit. So my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the good news about separation anxiety for the believer is we're never alone. 
He promised never to leave us alone, never to leave us alone. And so I'm grateful that he gives to us that promise and he fulfills that promise through his Holy Spirit. Now, in the midst of all of that, we understand that there's still some things that we have to represent. We have to represent God in the midst of all of this. And so John chapter 15 is a classic passage of scripture where Jesus tells all of his disciples, this is what I want you to do now, stay connected to me. Stay connected to me. Don't lose your connectivity. Don't lose your connection to who I am and all that I have done for you and all that I have taught you. And so he gives a command from the master that is necessary for us to read in chapter 15. Yes, he gives us comfort for our misery. But then when you get to chapter 15, there's a command from the master. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to represent me well. Don't get into this season of separation and isolation. Don't get into this season of affliction and tribulation and misrepresent me. You've been with me too long. You've seen me do too much. You've heard too much from me for you to get into a season where even a pandemic stresses you out and you are not able to maintain who you are. Listen to the command from the master. I want you to show to everybody with whom you come in contact the love that I have shown to you. He says, stay connected to me. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask anything and it will be done for you. And so in chapter 15, Jesus gives us command after command. As a matter of fact, that word is used quite regularly in chapter 15, letting us know it is not an option. And Jesus Christ has not given us a menu of, uh, of alternatives. Pick this one, pick that one. It's not a smorgasbord of opportunities. No, he said, this is what I want you to do if you're going to represent me. I want you to love one another, show your love for one another, however you need to do that. If you know of someone who's in a home by him or herself, make sure you call that person, show that person love. If you know of someone who is dealing with some situation and you may not be able to have, uh, you may not have the answer for it, but you can call your church and your church can do whatever they can to help, to assist, to aid some sister or brother in that process. Do what you can to show love one to another. That's how we abide in the Lord, by making sure that we are showing to the world what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. By this will all people know that you're my disciple if you have love one for another. So we're going to show love one to another, even in social distancing. One way to show love is make sure you don't congregate with a whole bunch of people and you don't get yourself in any compromised position because you're not following the guidelines that have been handed to us. And so I want you to do that. I want you to make sure that you do that. And we're going to make sure that we remember the command of the master. Now, I said all that to get to chapter 16, because chapter 16 is the chapter uh, that has been on my heart and mind all uh, all week long as I've thought about the separation anxiety with many of, which many of our brothers and sisters are facing. When you get to the end of chapter 16, you recognize that Jesus says, listen, I don't want you to be stressed out. I don't want you to be of, uh, you know, I don't want you to disregard all the things that I've taught you because you're about to go through some things, th some things that you never anticipated going through. He says, I want to be upfront with you. You're going to have to deal with some affliction. You're going to have to deal with some tribulation, some persecution. You're going to have to deal with it. But he says, don't worry about that. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have to deal with persecution, affliction, tribulation, separation, anxiety. But he says, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. That's one of my favorite verses of scripture. Matthew, I'm John, John chapter 16, verse 33. It's a beautiful passage of scripture when Jesus says, listen, in this world, you will have tribulation. He does not make any bones about it. He's not trying to sugarcoat it. You're going to have to go through some stuff. As my disciple, even as because you love me, you're going to have to go through some things. But don't let that overtake you. Don't let that overcome you because Jesus says, I've overcome the world. That's great news for me tonight. And so in this, in this separation situation, and let's be clear, we've learned this week, it's going to be longer than most of us thought. We're going to be away from our church house. We're going to be away from our many of our friends and our loved ones for an extended period of time. We had hoped that we would have gotten back into the sanctuary, back into worship experiences much sooner uh, than we probably will. But we're going to have to deal with it for an extended period of time. But Jesus says, don't let that stress you out. This is what I want you to know. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. I have overcome the world. So go ahead and be of good cheer. That means change your disposition. 
Change your attitude. Don't get all fussy with them people in your house because you're cooped up in there with them. Stop saying I'm stuck in my house. I heard somebody, somebody sent me a message. I'm not stuck in my house. I'm safe in my house. So stay safe in your house. You're not stuck there. The Lord has insulated you for a reason. Stay there and stay safe. And let's make sure that we move through this situation through these days, these weeks, what may turn into month or months. Let's make sure that we stay connected to the one who says, I can still give you peace. That's what he says in verse 33 of chapter 16. I'm still going to give you peace in the midst of this. That's a continuation from last week where he says, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Remember now, the Lord Jesus came to be the Prince of Peace. He wants us to have a peace that passes all understanding. And so as we experience that peace, as we engage and enjoy the peace that only comes from the Lord, then likewise we have joy. That same passage of scripture in John chapter 16 says that the disciples' grief will be turned into joy. And friends, I want you to have the joy of the Lord that joy that the world cannot give, nor can the world take away. I want you to have that joy uh, that comes from a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned to you last week, don't forget uh, to continue with your devotions, your prayers, your reading of scripture, whatever it is that connects you to God. I submit, I suggest that you ought to start your day singing praises unto the Lord, get up in the morning, shouting hallelujah to God for another day. And then as you go through that, Know that uh, this God that we serve is, has, has put in place that no matter how much separates us, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That blesses my socks off. That's Romans chapter 8. And whenever you want to be blessed, read Romans chapter 8. That's what the young adults did this past Friday in their worship service as the Reverend Barnett, Reverend Dr. Barnett led them. So I want you to make sure that you understand that nothing separates you from the love of God. You don't just experience that love in the sanctuary. You can experience it in your home. You can experience it wherever you are. And that love that God has for us was made perfect through Jesus Christ, who on a Friday afternoon gave his life so that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly and have it eternally. And I'm excited about that on this Tuesday evening. This That's Tuesday Touch for me. I, I want to share that with you and I pray that it makes your day a little bit better. Hope that it makes your season of separation a little more bearable. And as until we get back together again, I want you to know that I am praying for you. I want to pray for you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And I hope that you will join us tomorrow at 6 as we pray together as a church family and then get ready for next week as we're probably going to pray every day next week. We're probably going to have our prayer calls, plural, every day next week. We'll get you more information about that by the time we get to Sunday morning. But until we get back together again, we're going to check to see if there's anything else from House Associate Pastor Lawson. Oh, somebody asked, how's Pastor Lawson? I saw that and I was going to share it with you. Pastor Lawson is doing well. He is home and he is staying safe. Uh, his body is doing well. He is, and of course, his mind is very strong. And so thank you so much for asking about our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend Pastor William Alexander Lawson. It's such a blessing. And we are grateful that God is blessing him, even in this situation and season of his life. At 91 years of life, pressing toward 92, the Lord has blessed him mightily. And we're so grateful that we're beneficiaries of the blessings that God has passed through the life of Pastor William Alexander Lawson. So thank you for asking for that, uh, asking that question. We'll certainly uh, pass that on to him just in case he didn't uh, get on. You never know. Pastor Lawson might be on this uh, Facebook Live experience, but we want to make sure we pass it on to him and let him know that the saints are praying for him as well. Anything else? We've got a quick question. I'll make sure I answer it. It looks like that's all. All right. I thank God for you. That's right around 30 minutes. That's all I wanted to, sh to take from you today. Look forward to sharing with you in the morning. And until then, you know how we do it. The Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Peace. <laughs>